Tetranikids are a bane to many cultivated plant species, and perhaps the most well-known is the two-spotted spider mite, Tetranikus urticae. A few other species in the Tetranikus genus are pests, such as the McDaniel mite and the red tomato spider mite. There are biocontrol initiatives for the control of the aforementioned species, and several notable agents are predatory mites. Not all mites have the same capabilities, and each species has a specific environment in which it performs best. Choosing the correct mite can be arduous in some cases, especially for someone who is unfamiliar or not up to date on the scientific literature. As new species and better understanding of prey host relations can change the dynamic of biocontrol decisions. In this video, I will be comparing some of the research literature pertaining to three predatory mites that prey on Tetranicus urticae specifically. They are Phytocilius persimilis, Neocilius californicus, and Amblyseus andersoni. These species have been chosen because each one lies on a different level of the revised life system classification for phytoceid mites proposed by James A. McMurdy and others meant to replace a 1997 assessment. This classification system is a useful tool that considers feeding behavior of different predaceous mites relevant to biocontrol viability. Essentially, the higher the type number, the more generalized the diet is, with type 1 being highly specialized for mite control. Another aspect that fluctuates over time is the economic viability of certain species, which is a reflection of many factors, including the difficulty of rearing and developments which manipulate the fitness in commercial races. This is hard to account for and may change dramatically as biocontrol techniques advance. Nonetheless, the retail price of a biocontrol agent necessarily influences and dictates the viability of a biocontrol agent's use. Things such as the frequency and rate of applications will be influenced dependent on the price of a biocontrol agent. Additionally, some predatory mites are more versatile and can be deployed in different ways, which may have strategic implications. Finally, aspects of their development, such as life tabling and environmental range, will be cited in the description. The first mite will be Phytocilius persimilis, the persimilis mite. Persimilis is a type 1a mite, highly specialized, with the ability to defeat the complicated web type web morphology associated with Tetranicus species. Control is impaired when applied on solanaceous crops, ostensibly due to the trichomal growth in many species, particularly tomato. Other species of Phytocilius may be more useful on these crops. Persimilis has a reputation for being an effective biocontrol agent for two-spotted spider mite, and there is much data to back up this reputation. Indeed, a persimilis population can double in as little as four days at approximately 25 degrees Celsius, and persimilis populations double in half the time that Tetranicus urticae takes in some winter conditions. Relative humidity below 60% can be deleterious to persimilis. It is also very fast and is readily visible on the green background of foliage. Typically, this mite is deployed in bulk inundative releases, as the nature of the agent's carnivorous, specialized diet precludes it from establishing in a crop the same way an omnivorous generalist mite would be able to. Because of this, it is primarily relegated to a reactionary and curative biocontrol role and cannot take advantage of inoculative release strategies such as sachet deployment. Despite this, its ability to overmatch Tetranicus populations by sheer numerical superiority 
rapid locomotion, and voracious appetite is enough for most treatment circumstances. Tetranicus defenses, such as their complicated webs and preference for the ventral side of leaves, are ineffective against persimilis, as it has co-evolved to counteract them. In summary, persimilis is a great first response biocontrol agent against Tetranicus urticae populations, and what it lacks in versatility, it makes up for in peerless specialization. Secondarily, there is Neocilius californicus, which is considered a type 2 mite, one that is a selective predator of tetranicid, tarsinemid, and erophiid mites, as well as pollen. For californicus specifically, it has the ability to cut through spider mite webbing with its chlycerae and penetrate silken nests of Oligonychus persiae. These adaptations give it an advantage against its prey and may be more suitable in situations where multiple mite pest families are present. Californicus is poorly suited to controlling Tetranicus evansi, according to one study, and it can survive on both broad mite and cyclamen mite populations, as well as the first instar of western flower thrips, and pollen. Its omnivorous diet increases its survivability in circumstances where pest pressure is low, which allows it to take advantage of inoculative relief strategies, notably the use of sachets, which generate a population over time in a crop. The use of supplemental pollen as a prophylactic can sustain Californicus populations for a short while and may be advantageous in anticipation for a pest population increase. Crops that naturally produce an abundance of pollen, such as peppers, will help sustain Californicus without additional assistance. The development time of Californicus is somewhat slower than Tetranicus urticae in many typical greenhouse conditions, but it has a great degree of staying power owed to its expansive diet, which also adds to its value as a biocontrol agent. In essence, Californicus is a versatile, predatory mite that can defeat Tetranicus urticae webs and establish in a crop controlling additional pest populations simultaneously. Lastly is Amblyseus andersoni, a type 3b mite, one that is a generalist feeding on several species of mites and insects across multiple families, as well as being viable on pollen. Subtype 3b indicates a preference for glabrous leaves, which are ones that have very little trichomal growth. Andersoni take longer to develop than Tatronychus urticae in typical greenhouse conditions, but they are also long-lived, having a lifespan that can reach over 100 days. This means that they are perhaps best suited to long-term preventative strategies, where the intention is to establish this mite as a multifaceted biocontrol agent. Another role that Andersoni can play is as a Supplemental pressure combined with more specialized treatments, especially in crops with multiple pest species. This longevity, combined with their more generalized diet, gives them a substantial broad spectrum control potential that complements their predation on Tetranicus urticae, but can allow them to exist in the absence of this target, making it helpful for prevention efforts. In fact, Andersoni has been observed to feed on grape powdery mildew. All in all, Andersoni is a jack of all trades that can survive easily on multiple hosts and establishes itself well, making preventative spider mite treatment its most viable stratagem.